Fatigue is caused primarily by, by three things really. The first and most important is how much sleep you've had the night before and that's the number one determinant. Next thing is really how much sleep you've had in the past 48 to 72 hours. So it's really whether you've built up a sleep debt. We all have a pre-programmed amount of sleep that we need to have. Generally it's somewhere between six and eight hours. And if we don't get that pre-programmed amount of sleep, we build up what's called a sleep debt. And that can really build up cumulatively over a period of time. And the third factor and, and the other one that affects the level of fatigue at any given moment is the time of day. We've all got a circadian rhythm and that's really something that we're pre-programmed with. We are diurnal animals, we're not nocturnal animals, we're not supposed to be working at night. If a pilot believes he may be fatigued, it's important to make sure that all the other issues are addressed. So for example, it's important to make sure that you're very well hydrated and not suffering the ill effects of dehydration. It's also important to make sure that you've had good nourishment and taken a well-balanced diet. Generally a light diet is, is appropriate if somebody's suffering the effects of fatigue, nothing too heavy in terms of carbohydrates or proteins. It's also important to make sure there's no other issues at play, for example, any medications that you might be taking, any illnesses or the effects of alcohol. Lastly, we, we start looking at salvage type techniques and for example, the, the strategic use of caffeine has got some evidence that can improve performance. But other than that, the only real cure for fatigue is to get some sleep. Fatigue proofing strategies would depend on the level of fatigue of the individual. If it was significant, we would expect the crew member to actually contact our operations area and advise that they are fatigued, they would not be able to operate. Fatigue is a complex problem and a simple rule-based system is not enough to address fatigue risks. When we talk about managing fatigue in an RPT operation, we talk about it as a shared responsibility model. And sh the share is between the organisation and the individual. It's important that the organisation provides a reasonable roster and a, that reasonable roster has to provide not only enough time to actually get sufficient sleep, but also to undertake the other activities of life that we all need to undertake. From the individual's perspective, it's important that they take those sleep opportunities and they actually get adequate rest and they don't undertake other activities prior to duty that will put them at risk of fatigue developing. If both of these responsibilities have been carried out, there are still situations where fatigue can arise and so there needs to be some strategies in place for when an individual, despite the best intentions of both the organisation and themselves, still finds themselves in a scenario where they don't feel fit to operate the flight. Make sure as a pilot you're well rested, you're fit for duty and that means self-reporting if you're not feeling the best. Get the right rest and make sure your family is aware of, of the need to have good rest prior to your flying. The organisation needs to take some responsibility as well, that is defining clearly policies regarding the risk of fatigue. So they need to recognise that fatigue is just as normal as, as perhaps ringing up with the flu or having a migraine. Fatigue has just the same performance decrement as, as when, you're, when you're feeling sick. It's also important that domestic duties in relation to caregiving and other issues are shared so that if the pilot has a number of days off he may take more of the burden of domestic care. But on the nights prior to duty, it may be that the spouse takes care of the small child. Uh, in a single pilot environment, it's a, there's less options for managing it within flight other than um, recognising it and being very, very careful. At the other end of the flight, whether it's a turnaround or a, uh, a period on the ground, taking advantage of an opportunity to get 40 winks or a, or a, a nana nap really can make a big difference to fatigue. We recently had a problem with a, uh, one of our instructors who was a, a grade three instructor and not the highest paid position in the world. So he was out working in a bar of a night time to, uh, to make ends meet and pay off his flying loan. He uh, was cleaning up, cleaning up the bar till 2am and then back here at 7am to, to, uh, uh, to do his first flying lesson. When I talked to him about it and said that's probably not the best, best way to go and that uh, we could probably find something else for him within the company or perhaps elsewhere, we, uh, we got him a job doing some ground handling work, which we do uh, as, uh, as another part of our company. Worked far better. He was doing that on the weekend when he wasn't doing his flying training and uh, it, it just fitted in much better and there was no fatigue. Well, when, you, when you're going to do anything like a Red Bull Air Race, an air show flying, probably a military fighter pilot does the same thing, is that we're preparing not just 15 minutes before a flight, we're preparing five and six days before a flight. So I'm here in Perth, Australia, 12 hours out of my time zone. I've been here for eight days already. The first three days I came here, just to start to transition. And then I also watch what I eat, watch uh, how I sleep, 
watch what I drink. I don't drink any caffeine during the race week so I can go to bed on time. So it's a matter of being prepared really a long time in advance for one of these kinds of flights. So fatigue risk management is just a, another form of safety management and it's important to gather data about fatigue so that your safety management system can learn from it. Many organisations will have a fatigue reporting form. They'll also have the ability to report fatigue as a possible contributory factor in terms of incidents. It's important to collect that data because patterns may be forming and it may be that the organisation needs to address some rostering issues or actually change some patterns on occasion.